In this video, I'll be sharing some tips on how to make better projects and games on Scratch. For getting these tips, I asked Platform Maker 444, a really popular Scratcher known for his platformers. I personally like his work a lot and I thought he must have some amazing tips for you guys. And fortunately he does. He does not want to reveal his voice. So I'll be using AI text to speech for his voiceover. So let's get started. Tip number one, thumbnails are a massive part of your project. It's what draws the user to it in the first place. You need a big, bold title and a clear understanding of the game. You can use tools such as Photop, free Photoshop, for effects like blur and fisheye. Now, I have made multiple videos on making thumbnails on Scratch. I would highly recommend you checking them out from the respective links in the description. Tip number two, keep your code clean. Sometimes people want to see how your projects work. And if they are greeted with messy, unorganized code, then they won't know what's going on. If you are expecting remixers, then use comment blocks to guide the user. Another thing I would like to add on this point would be to name your variables, lists, and broadcast messages properly. This way, it would become much easier for people to understand your code and remix it. Tip number three, asking for feedback is always good. There is a difference between advertising and asking for feedback. Advertising is careless spam on people's profile, but feedback is when you want opinions or suggestions. You can create feedback studios for your projects and invite your followers. Just make sure to check people's profiles to see if they don't want to be invited to studios. Tip number four, actually listen to people's ideas. If a lot of people want, for example, a shop system, then add it. It's all about responding to people's feedback. If they feel there are features missing in your games, they won't want to play. I would like to add that if the game is fun without adding any extra features, people would still want to play it. But to make the experience even better and give the players a reason to play the game again, new features must be added. Tip number five. Don't use generic music. Find something that fits the theme of your game. Look on pixabay.com for royalty-free music.sfx downloads. This is the same for art. Making art in the editor is far better than using the costume library. It makes your game look unique and professional. I strongly agree with this tip. You can literally put any song in your projects. Take advantage of that and start using the songs you want. Tip number six. If you're bad at art but brilliant at coding, itch.io will solve your struggles. Here you can find loads of free assets, tile sets, and more, which you can use in your scratch projects. Tip number seven. The little details count. Add fun Easter eggs to your games to keep players hooked. Small effects like smooth movement really make your game look so much better. I would highly recommend checking out my game Air O Plane on Scratch and really see how many little details I have added in that game. You might not particularly notice them while playing, but if I remove them, the game will instantly feel less fun. Tip number 8. Subscribe to McVincent right now or Griff Patch will throw beans at you. Oh, I wasn't expecting that to be a tip, but true. Real tip number 8. Earn your followers. I don't agree with the follow for follow strategy because you didn't work for your followers. It's just a lazy practice that should be avoided. Tip number nine, if you have just started or have little to no experience with Scratch, make a clone of a popular simple game such as Flappy Bird or Pong. This will help you get a feel of the Scratch editor and it isn't too complicated. There are plenty of Flappy Bird clones out there to discover if you're stuck. Tip number 10, if you're thinking, I have heard this all before, maybe it's time for something new. Don't limit yourself to Scratch. There are plenty of game engines such as Unity, Godot, or for more visual approaches, Game Maker and GDevelop. I would recommend learning Unity if you are interested in making 3D games. I tried it a few years ago and it's not too difficult to get started. Actually, it's easy to be honest. So anyway, follow Platform Maker on Scratch and subscribe to McVinchin if you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.